Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. Yesterday during normal business hours, AMC closed at 440, up 1.62%, and the Ape closed at 180, down 2.17%, bringing the combined price of AMC and Ape to 620, up 0.49% on 34.2 million shares traded. But then it happened. Judge Zern rocked Wall Street by denying the settlement on conversion. AMC got as high as 880. The pounce, the ape, dropped 14.47% to finish the after-hours session at $1.54. The new combined price now stands at $8.71. This day will forever be known by me as the Zern Rally. As I said in previous videos, smart money will know what's up before we do. As you can see on the chart, I believe at 9.35 a.m., people were learning that the judge had a decision, and you can see the big red candle that tipped it off. It began a gradual decline, and by 10 a.m., AMC began a gradual ascent. And yes, now that it's Saturday, I can confirm that AMC remained on the New York Stock Exchange list of threshold securities for yesterday and has been there since June 23rd. As you know, the last time we were on this dubious list for more than three weeks, Adam Aaron contacted FINRA and the New York Stock Exchange and implored them to look at the trading of our stock no tweet from Adam on the case yet, so I must assume he's busy contacting them again. I hope you're picking up on the sarcasm. And look at this. Yesterday's off exchange and dark pool volume dropped to 29%. Oh, that's right. This big rally happened after business hours. Interesting, isn't it? One thing that hasn't dropped much is the cost to borrow fee on AMC. At the time of this recording, I see 45,000 shares available with a fee of 991.77%. And out of 7,705 companies, AMC is now second on the list of companies with the highest cost to borrow shares. I would only add that the average cost to borrow on this list is 8.95%. We stand at 991%. Yes, it matters. And, of course, the SEC remains silent on this amazing spike of FTDs exceeding 12 million on three or four bars there. But moving over to Reddit, sentiment and mention tracker, AMC has clawed its way to the second position behind only Bitcoin with 688 mentions up 388% at the time of this recording. XRP is also on that list in the sixth position and Ape in the seventh position. And AMC is all over the financial press. From Yahoo Finance, AMC Entertainment shares soar after Judge Block's equity transactions. Judge denies AMC settlement on stock conversion. Shares surge. AMC shares surge as Judge denies Ape deal in surprise ruling. Well, maybe for you. As you know, Uncle Frank will never tell you to buy, sell, or hold any security or cryptocurrency, but I can share my activity with my subscribers. The truth is, beginning July 12th, Uncle Frank began selling blocks of ape, and I put my receipts up. Uh, why? Well, I didn't want to. Uh, actually, I never wanted to sell ape going into a potential conversion. Uh, I also wanted to hold it past its one-year anniversary, 
which would be next month to avoid any short-term capital gain. However, you can see on July 12th, that was like five green days in a row. You could see RSI topping out, and you could see my receipts on the right. What am I buying? AMC and XRP. So what do we need from here now? In my opinion, a perfect storm for our hedge fund friends. Let's start with a big box office this weekend. Yes, I know, Barbie is a woke piece of crap. But get over to our theaters and go see something. Let's support our business. Headline from Deadline 16 hours ago, Barbie glams up summer with 150 million plus opening. Oppenheimer excites 75 million plus box office update and from the hollywood reporter box office milestone sound of freedom crosses a hundred million in the u.s and now would be a great time for a black or white swan from fortune billionaire barry sternlicht on the category five hurricane hitting office buildings some will become parkland maybe fields of grain or something it will be very pretty i hope you can read barry's sarcasm about the crisis that could hit the commercial real estate sector at any moment and have you noticed the civil cases have been ramping up lately that's because regulators aren't doing their jobs so brave companies and investors are heading to court to fight the corruption Mullen and Highcroft are recent examples, and the brave apes that went to Delaware to fight for their investment. Maybe the case against AMC short seller Antara will yield some useful information in the coming weeks. Or maybe it will be a case like this one, brewing against this little turd, Caroline Ellison, who allegedly paid herself a $22.5 million bonus around the time she estimated a more than $10 billion cash shortfall at FTX, a recent lawsuit alleges. You'll never know what we're going to find out next in Discovery or when a rat decides to make a deal to save itself. Maybe the next big case will be for breach of fiduciary duty. In this article, Mark Cohodas was quoted as saying, Adam Aaron, the AMC executives and the board of directors ran an enrichment scheme at the expense of individual investors who actually saved the company. Uncle Frank, you're not being fair. No, let me tell you what's not fair. While we were supporting the stock, going to the movies, buying merchandise, losing value on our stock, our CEO, his management team, and our board were selling stock to us over $1 billion worth over the past 60 months and never bought a single share over that same time period, we made them multi-millionaires while they paid themselves stock and cash bonuses only to blow out of the stock. And this is even during the pandemic. This is also while Hollywood was starving us for movies to show in our theaters. They could have suspended these outrageous bonuses at least until the company was out of harm's way. But they wanted to extract as much money as they could as they were bleeding the company dry. I'll give you one example, even though I've got dozens. Our CFO in 2020 was paid a base salary exceeding $622,000. We then paid him a non-stock cash bonus of over $761,000. This is during a pandemic. This is when we're being starved for product to show in our theaters. I ask you honestly, have you ever gotten a bonus in your life that exceeds your base salary? But that's not it. We also paid him a stock bonus exceeding 2.8 million dollars that's 4.59 times his base salary while the business is in trouble and and our cfo has sold over 17 million seven hundred and fifty two thousand dollars worth of the stock over the past five years and has never bought a single share wake up so uncle frank where did our cfo come from that's easy 
Morgan Stanley mergers and acquisitions, exactly where the leader of our board of directors came from, Philip Later. Hey, I want to thank you for watching, and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.